Have you ever felt that despite knowing all of the formulas required for the MCAT, somehow when you're faced with a question that asks you to apply them, you're still kind of lost. Hello, my name is Sherry from MCAT Mastery. I'm excited to see you here with us again, trying to learn how to study better for the MCAT. Before we jump in, let's first make sure that we have a solid understanding of the formulas themselves. So the question you should be asking yourself right now is that number one, do I know what each of the variables stands for? Do I know their units? And number two, do I know when and where should I apply these formulas? For instance, let's take the acceleration formulas as an example. I'm sure that at this point, you're good friends with them and you're familiar with them. If you have a good understanding of these formulas, you should know what each of the variables stands for and their units. For instance, you should know that V stands for velocity and its units are meters per second. Number two, you should also know that the set of formula can be only used when there's a constant acceleration. And thirdly, we have four formulas that kind of all talks about acceleration and velocity and time, right? So how do I choose when to use which formula? Well, if you look at them closely, you also realize that the first formula is missing a variable, which is the distance traveled. So if the distance traveled is irrelevant in a question, you know that is the best to use the first formula. Let's look at another example. If you look at the third formula, you also realize that the time is not included in this formula. So you would know that when the time is irrelevant in the question you're looking at, it's best to use the third acceleration formula. Once you have a solid understanding of the formulas themselves, let's talk about steps to dissect a CP question. So when you're first presented with a question, you want to first make sure you understand what subject is this question testing you on. To do this, you want to take a brief look at the question stem itself and just get a general feel for what subject is the question going to ask you about. For instance, you see words like moles, dilution, solutions, probably going to ask something about chemistry. On the other hand, if you see things like weight, speed, distance traveled, it's probably going to be somehow related to physics. The next thing they want to do is to read the question more carefully and use keywords to identify a specific topic within that subject that the question is asking you all. For instance, solution, molarity, acidity are telling signs of a dilution question. On the other hand, buoyancy, pressure, fluid are telling signs of a fluid dynamic question. Your mind should be prepped for a list of formulas that's relevant to the question. The next thing you want to do is to find one formula that can be applied and used in this question. The way to do that is to look for the numbers that's given to you in the question as and identify them as variables. In the meantime, also pay attention to what variable are you being asked to find. Using these two pieces of information, try to see if there is one formula that matches your expectation. Notice that we are trying to find the correct formula. There might be a case where there is a perfect formula that fits everything, except that it's missing one more or two more variables that's not being talked about, that's not being given to you in the original question. This is very common in passage-based question. In this case, it's very likely that there is one more known variable hidden somewhere in the passage. But in this case, it's very easy for you to go back and scan the passage just look for the variable that you are missing. Once you have all of the pieces, you now can rearrange the equation so that all of your known variables on the one side and your unknowns on the other side. One way to know that you've rearranged the equations correctly is to multiply out the units. If your final unit matches up with the correct answer unit in the answer choices, you've done a good job. Now, all that might sound really intuitive to you. So let's walk through an example together to demonstrate what I mean by these steps. If you would like to have more tips and strategy from us to help you in this journey, please feel free to check out the link below. You will be able to find more free resources and please also look at our tutors, all of whom have been through the same exact journey that you are going through now and they're all very passionate and happy to help out students like you. Pay more attention to the process that I've taken to solve this question. Let's first think about what subject is this question about? Just taking a brief look at the question, it seems to us that they're talking about chemistry by their mentioning of nuclei and ionization. What exact topic is this question asking us about? They're asking us to find a certain amount of time in the unit of years. They also mention something like remaining nuclei, which kind of implies that there are some other nuclei that were decayed in the past. Well, what topic in chemistry involves both of these elements? Well, that sounds pretty much like a half-life problem. And once you realize that, I'm sure that you will have no trouble finding the half-life formula from your knowledge of formulas. However, looking at this formula more carefully, 
we also see that we're missing some essential variables. We're missing that half-life and the initial amount of nuclei that's present. In this case, we might want to go back to the passage and see if we can find additional information there. Assuming you've done that, I'm happy to let you know that that is the correct thing to do. The half-life of those nuclei is 430 years, and the initial amount of nuclei is 6 million. Now we have all the variables that's necessary for us to solve for the unknown time. In this case, it would be very easy to just plug and chalk and just rearrange the equation so that you can find the amount of time it takes for that 6 million nuclei to decay. In this case, I know that most of you, by just looking at the question, will just know exactly what formula to use and how to solve this question. However, we are faced with something that's more complicated and more confusing. You will have the correct methodology and you will not lose confidence when faced with those types of questions. The key to answering CP questions or any question on the MCAT is to not be scared or intimidated by the complicated scenario of wording the question. Good luck with studying and know that you will and can conquer this exam.